someone's watching just now and you are in a crisis situation and you and you because you have no vision picture in your mind you see the bible says where there is no vision where there's nothing in front of your eyes people perish and and i just believe with you right now and neil that we're going to agree together that you are going to see a vision of what God wants for you in your life in 2021. I'm not coming up with any cool slogans because 2020 cured all of us preachers from slogans ever again. No one's going to have no more slogans. But I, I decree this in your life in the name of Jesus. That the vision that he will put inside your heart and spirit is going to come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. The dream Amen. was the promised land. Moses sent the spies to view their vision. Let me tell you something. Eleven offers on Neil's house. God guards the promised land with giants. Because if a giant can dissuade you from doing what God's called you to do, you don't deserve it. So don't think that God's going to give it to you on a plate and say, well, there you are, you saw the vision, and here you are. Something has got to be built inside you that you say to your circumstance, I don't care how long it takes, I don't care what people say, I don't care how little finance I have towards it, this is what God has ordained me to be. And when the vision that you yearn and look for becomes so real and tangible in your life, it's more, it's more secure than money in the bank. The vision we had at Vatra Village of these six homes, it's yeah. been well over a million and a half dollars we've spent there so far. And I'm here to tell you something, it's completely paid for, all paid off, because God puts a vision in someone that you can see beyond the circumstance, beyond the raging Jordan, beyond the spies, beyond, the giants rather, beyond, beyond all of those things. Because I know out there somewhere for me, there's grapes and there's honey and there's milk and there's a promised land for my heart to land upon. And I speak to you in the name of Jesus that every dream you have, God gives dreams, God gives visions. This isn't the imagination, oh, wouldn't it be great? If God puts something in your spirit, he is going to bring it to pass. Amen. What's more ridiculous than a man going to Tulsa, Oklahoma and staying in a hotel and driving around looking at houses? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. I it was until he unlocked the door of his house and walked into his dream. And I believe that's going to happen for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Neil, this is good See, stuff. Great stuff. Philip, I knew the house. Yeah. I knew the house was mine when I walked in it because I'd already been there. Crap. It's like the uh, it's like the reporter who asked Walt Disney's brother when they opened Walt Disney World. Yeah. And the reporter said, Isn't it a shame that your brother didn't get to see this? <laughs> and he answered the reporter, who obviously didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah. He answered the reporter. He said, he saw it. That's why you're seeing it now. Oh, my Lord. Years ago, when PTL was at his zenith in Charlotte, my dear friend Jim Baker that I love with all my heart, um, I walked in one time to his, to his green room, to his dressing room, and he had a plan. I, it, was like a, it was like a rug. It must have been... 12, 16 feet long by 8 foot. And it was, the, it was the plans of Main Street, USA. And he says, come here, I want to show you something. So I went down on my knees beside Jim Baker. And he's crawling over this map and he's telling me all these crazy things. And I said, Jim, how in the name of goodness do you see this? He says, oh, I saw this long before it came here. And then I said to him, listen, I says, what do you think when you see all the buildings that you've built? And this is what Jim Baker said to me. I never see the buildings I've built. I only see the empty spaces. Mm. I only see I want the to empty tell you, spaces. It, it, there, there's some people watching. And listen, I just want to encourage you. 
the reason that you have a portrait to pursue, the reason God gives us the imagination, the ability to do this, it's, it's not really about the destination. Mm. It's about who you become to get there. On the way. Absolutely. Yeah. See, Joseph, Joseph had the dream. But the dream, the destination of that dream was not the goal. And I'm going to tell you why I know that is because he told his descendants, yeah. when you go back to Israel, take you will bones. take my bones with you. Brilliant. My Lord. The yes. destination of the palace of the Pharaoh was not oh. the goal. A crazy. The goal was to become the man yeah. qualified for the palace. So ultimately, it's not about the house and it's not about the stuff. It's about the process of growth that God develops in you, in your circumstance. Listen to me watching right now. Pastor, if you're in a situation and you're thinking, my God, what am I going to do? Catch the vision. See something yeah. beyond what you're facing right now. Because what you're facing right now is the most temporary thing in your life. You're not going to be here forever. You're not going to be in this circumstance forever. You're passing through towards whatever right. the vision is that you see, are looking see, at. People, throw, people cast off words that are biblical, like prosperity yeah. or prosper. They, they, they brush that off because yeah. they, they, they're offended by that word. It's a biblical word. Now, listen to this. Joseph oh, yeah. was served in the house of Potiphar and the Bible says he prospered as a slave. So therefore prosperity has nothing to do with the money. When he was in prison, the Bible says he prospered when he was in prison. That's true. What does prosper mean? It means that your journey will go well with you. The reason Joseph served the Potiphar was Joseph had to learn an economic system that he was unfamiliar with. Wow. He came from a shepherding family and he needed to learn the agrarian system of economy of seed time and harvest because one day he would be over Egypt. Yes. And he needed to understand their, their economy. So when he was in prison, what did he have to do? He had to learn how to deal with cons and crooks. Sure. Joseph would be a politician. So he had to learn how to deal with those who were cons and, and crooks. And he ended up, I mean, he ended up running the prison. So he was so adept at what he learned that he went from being a prisoner to being the manager of the prisoner, uh, of the prison. I rather. So the, his growth was I happening all the, the time. Funniest, one of the funniest lines in the whole Bible is when Joseph walks by and sees the cupbearer and the baker who comes into prison. I, I find this the funniest line in the Bible. He looks at the cupbearer and the, and the baker in prison and says, why are you so depressed? <laughs> Dude, I'm wow. in prison. <laughs> wow. I'm in wow. prison. The atmosphere of the prison was so prosperous wow. under Joseph that even the prisoners. Crazy had the countenance of joy and you could recognize the, the new, the, the newbies yeah, because the, they were depressed. Because they're coming in. And what's crazy, people must understand this, Joseph was a spoiled and privileged kid. I mean, he, he, drove, the, he drove the family car when his, when his brothers were looking at the wrong end of cows. He, had, he was wearing Armani and, um, and the brothers could tolerate all of that stuff. The brothers could tolerate him having the family car and they can tolerate his fancy coat. But the thing that drove them nuts was the dream. That's the, the key, dream. Philip. Listen, My the reason, God, the and this is so wrong, they, they were also descendants of the dreamer. Absolutely. See, it was Abraham who Abraham. had the original dream. Yeah, yeah. He's... What did God do? God told Abraham, come out of the tent and look at the stars. You know what that yes. was? That was a vision board. That was a vision board. He said, look at the wow. stars. Count the stars. If you can count the, the stars, they represent your children. 
Look at the sand. If you can count the sand, you can claim it for your children's inheritance. Wow. So not only did he say, here's the stars for you to look at. Philip, listen. You that are watching, listen to me. Abraham walked out of a tent, looked at a star, and he said, Isaac. Then he said, Jacob. Then he called 12 more names. And then he kept naming names and stars. And do you know that he finally looked at a star and put a faith claim on you? Philip. He claimed <laughs> you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. He claimed goodness. you. A man in a desert thousands of years ago. Yeah. yeah. And God gave a man a vision board to put a faith claim on your life. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Philip, you did that when you went to Moldova. Yeah. Absolutely. Unbelievable. When you saw those children. Yeah, absolutely. You saw them lined up. Yeah. And you claimed them. I did. You put a faith claim on those lives. Yeah. You know what the greatest, the greatest evil on earth is mothers not having a vision for the children in their womb. Yeah. Jeez. The reason they're willing to kill and sacrifice a child is because they have no hope, no vision. Jeez. Satan has robbed them so much that they have no hope for the future. 